Welcome students, Algebra 1 to your Laws of Exponents Part 1 video. We're going to listen to some Beatles in the background today. One of the anthologies, 1967 to 1970, Disc 1. Okay, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Hopefully you can still hear it in the background. Let's jump right in and talk about some exponents. We're going to do some basic laws, talk about negative and zero exponents. And this is just Part 1. You'll have a Part 2 video coming up after this one. Not on the same night, obviously. So let's jump right in. Okay, expressions with exponents. Remember from what we've learned in the past that a power, a power is, excuse me, the power, a power is the product of multiplying a number by itself. Sorry, I have been distracted here in my classroom. A power is the product of multiplying a number by itself. A power is represented with a base number and an exponent. So. This whole thing right here, this is a power. This is your base. And this is your exponent. And yes, you are responsible for that vocabulary. If you learn to call this the base now, you're gonna find logarithms a lot easier. Just trust me on that one. You're not gonna have to worry about it till pre-cal, but just trust me, okay? All right, so remember that the exponent tells you, the exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base by itself. All right. Zero and negative exponents. A zero exponent automatically gives you a one. Any value to the zero power is one, and I will explain why. It's important that you know why. For negative exponents, if you have a base raised to a negative exponent, it turns it into a reciprocal. I call negative exponents reciprocal makers. Flips it over to make the exponent positive. And you can see two examples here, and, and we're gonna look at a quick example with powers of 10. Let's start by thinking about 10 to the third power, and we're gonna work our way down that way. 10 to the third power, 1,000, okay? 10 to the second power, 100. 10 to the first power, 10, easy so far, right? Now think about what's happening each time you go down a step. We're dividing by 10, right? Well, 10 to the zero power would be 10 divided by 10, which is one. And 10 to the negative one power would be one divided by 10, which is one tenth. And 10 to the negative 2 power would be 1 tenth divided by 10, which is 1 one hundredth. And that makes sense because 1 one hundredth is 1 over 10 squared. Okay, 1 over 10 squared right here because that's what 100 is. And 1 over 10 because that's the first power of 10, so 1 over 10 to the first. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into why the zero and the negative exponents work the way that they do. And now we'll start looking at some examples. We'll try a couple involving the zero and the negative exponents. So let's go ahead and look at those examples. So I want you to pause it. I'm gonna let the, this song finish out and then I'm gonna pause this because I've got a visitor that needs to talk to me at my door. Um, so try these problems and then I'll start it up again in just a minute and solve them out for you. Okay, so I'm gonna write it out and when it starts up again, it'll be a new song and some answers. So think about what you're doing as you go along. I'm sorry, I was distracted. I apologize for the editing jump. Okay, here we go. All right. I just love the Beatles. I could listen to this stuff all day. Okay, anyway, four to the negative three, one over four to the positive three, and then four times four times four is 64. So four to the negative three does not come out negative. Notice the lack of a negative sign. So negative exponents do not give you negative numbers. And that's a very important thing for us to go ahead and recognize right now. What do negative exponents give me? Tiny numbers. So negative exponents do not give me, negative exponents do not give me negative numbers. Negative exponents give me tiny numbers. Tiny, tiny numbers. Okay, that's important for us to remember. Zero exponent just gives us a one, so that one's super easy. Doesn't matter that the base is negative, it's still just a one. 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over 3 to the positive 2. 3 times 3 is 9, so 1 ninth. 6 to the negative 1, 1 sixth. So that negative 1 exponent is a reciprocal maker. And you can use a negative 1 exponent on your TI-84 calculator in class, and I will show you how to do that. Just like any other exponent, you can use that to, to um, find, uh, find your values. There's, a, there's an X to the negative 1 power button. Look for it when you come to class. Make a note. All right, this one you had to go ahead and write in the negative two exponent. My equation editor just didn't want to work right. So negative four raised to the negative two power 
is 1 over negative 4 raised to the positive 2 power, but with the parentheses there, that's going to come out to a positive 16, giving you a 1 16th answer for that one. Coming over here, these algebraic expressions, I want you to remember a couple of things. Only the part of the expression with a negative exponent is going to move in the fraction. So 5 has no negative exponent. In fact, it doesn't have any exponent at all. You could think of it as having an invisible exponent of 1 on that 5. So remember that. The 5 stays put. The a to the third, also a positive exponent. But what you do is you go ahead and you make it a fraction. The invisible 1 that lives downstairs now has a roommate. And b to the po positive 2 power appears downstairs when we rewrite that negative 2 exponent. One way that I've taught it for years is to, to switch the sign on the exponent, you jump the line of the fraction. To switch the sign, you jump the line. Same thing with this x to the negative 8. It's in the denominator, so it moves to the numerator. Here we have n to the negative 5 over n to the negative 4, and what we can do here is just have them switch places and make their exponents positive. And that's as simple as that problem can get. So this part I know can be daunting. We will work with our negative exponents quite a bit. And I want you to remember that if you stick to the rules, it's not bad. Okay? All right. Next concept. Multiplying powers. Multiplying powers with the same base. To multiply powers with the same base, we're going to add the exponents. And this is a great shortcut. This is not a concept. This is not why this works. This is a great shortcut. And I'm going to teach you why it works in just a minute. So a to the m power times a to the n power is a to the m plus n power, where we add the two exponents, except the base cannot be a zero. m and n are integers. Now, it will actually work if m and n are not integers, but that's something you wait to learn about until algebra 2. So 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 5th is 4 to the 3 plus 5, or 4 to the 8th. b to the 7th times b to the negative 4 is b to the 7 plus negative 4, or b to the 3rd. Now, why is it that this works? Well, hold on. Well, here's how it works right here, or why it works right here. You can use repeated multiplication to write a product. So if I think of a to the m times a to the n, a to the m is m factors of a. Now, it doesn't matter what m is. You notice the ellipsis? So it doesn't matter if it m is 40 or 7. It really doesn't matter. And then here we have n factors of a, and that's the a to the n product. If I just take out my parentheses and put the whole thing together, I would be combining m and n and have that many factors of a. So this is a shortcut, not a how-to. This isn't how it works because that's the rule. This is an awesome shortcut. We're cutting down on having to write this out. We're just noticing this great pattern, this great rule. Okay, let's try some. Okay, let's start simple. So we'll start with this first one. Again, you can pause it and try it. I'm going to go ahead and just write it out. So we're going to keep the base, and we're going to add our exponents together. 5 plus 8 is 13. So this is 9 to the 13th power. How about this one? We have negative 4, positive 6, and... I forgot. This song gets kind of loud at this point. I'll turn it down a bit. And a 1 right here. You see that invisible 1? I put it in there if I want to. All right. Keep my base. Add my exponents, and what do we get? Negative 4 plus 6 is 2, plus that 1, and that is what you guys will forget right there here from time to time. So let's make a note of that now. When it's just 4, when it's just a number without an exponent, make sure you think of the exponent 1. So negative 4 plus 6 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So that's 4 to the 3rd. And as you can see, I'm not actually going to multiply out 9 to the 13th power without a calculator because, no. <laughs> um, 4 to the 3rd I could do, that's just 64. But the concept here is not for us to multiply it out. It's for us to recognize the exponent rules. Next one. This time I have coefficients to multiply first. So 5 times 3 is going to be my new coefficient, or 15. That's a dot, not a subtraction sign. Make it nice and round. Oh, hey, come on now. There we go. And then I have x to the 4th. Ninth, and again, see it right there, first. So this will come out to be 15x to the 14th. Awesome. All right, again, I have coefficients to multiply. So I have negative 2, 5, and 3 multiplied. And then a to the 3rd, negative 8th, and 4th. And I can put my parentheses around the negative 8 because that's technically how it should look, but it's not really necessary if I know what I'm adding together. 
Negative 2 times 5, negative 10 times 3, negative 30. A to the, okay, A, uh, 3 plus negative 8 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So this problem, we've done the rule, but we're not actually finished with it because one of the rules that we have is that we can't leave the negative exponent in the expression. That's why we learned how to rewrite it in the previous um, step, on the previous slide. So instead of negative 30a to the negative 1, the negative 30 is going to stay up top, and the a to the first is going to go down to the bottom. And that problem is through. And we're at another point in that song where it gets kind of loud here. So let's move to the next slide and I'll go ahead and find a, a, another song for us to listen to. Power of a power. Raising a power to a power. Okay, so now we have a power already and we're raising that to a power. In this case, the shortcut is multiply the exponents. And I will once again show you why it's working in just a second with a simple example. But here you see a to the m power raised to the n means it becomes a to the m times n power. Again, a can't be zero, m and n are integers, but it still works if they're not. You just won't learn that this year. Five to the fourth, the quantity squared is five to the four times two or five to the eighth. Now real quick, let's look at why that's working. Come way up here. Five to the fourth, the quantity squared is five to the fourth times itself. So I have this, right? We'll go back and think about your rule in the previous um, step in the previous slide. 5 to the 4th times 5 to the 4th is 5 to the 4 plus 4. Well, that's the same thing as saying 2 times 4. 4 plus 4 and 2 times 4 are the same thing. And that's why this works. So it's a great shortcut. Again, not really a rule so much. It's just this great property because we've seen it happen and it works, so why not use it? So, oh, I don't want to use that color. Um, let's switch colors to another one. Try them yourself if you want, so go ahead and pause it, or I'll go ahead and write them out. Use green. D to the fifth raised to the fourth is D to the five times four, or D to the twentieth. D to the fourth raised to the fifth power is D to the four times five, or again D to the twentieth. Well, it works out nicely. So it doesn't matter which one's on the inside and outside, that one comes out the same. What about this one? D to the negative fifth raised to the fourth, negative five times four would give me negative twenty. So D to the negative twenty which is one over d to the positive 20. Awesome. So we only have one more slide. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop here for now and record the rest probably at um, lunchtime because it's time for you guys to come down. Um, so we'll leave Penny Lane um, where it is. In the pouring rain. I love this song. Um, yes, I totally did just sing in your video. Okay, so we'll finish this up later on with um, I'm trying to remember. Power of a product. That's the next one. All right. Ta-ta for now. Okay, kids. We're going to finish out this video. A little bit more Beatles to listen to. I've had a couple of classes to teach. And now i got to finish this up. Okay, so power of a product. Power of a product. Take a look right here. There's a product. The whole thing is being raised to this power. So each factor in the product gets raised to that power. So this one doesn't really have a shortcut. This is just a good rule. Again, a and b can't be zero. n is an integer. And again, dirty little secret. It still works if n, n is not an integer. You just don't learn that until algebra um, two. So you notice 3x the quantity to the fourth power. The part that you're going to forget is the 3 to the fourth. And that's the part that makes all the difference in the expression. That 4 goes to both of the factors in the parentheses because they're in parentheses, okay? Now, take a look here. Let's go ahead and um, figure this out. Again, pause it if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and trudge on to get this done with. Hold on. I don't like it when the writing is that small. It needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's try that. Okay. So, 4 to the 5th power. And it's kind of like the distributive property. I don't want you to think you're distributing, but it is kind of like the distributive property. And then remember, power of a power, we multiply our exponents. So y to the second power, the quantity to the fifth power, is y to the two times five. So this is going to be four to the fifth power. We'll get to that in a second. Y to the tenth. Four to the fifth power. Well, four times four times four times four times four. 
And I, although I have a big stack of calculators next to me, I'm still going to do it by hand. So 64 to the third power is 64. I know that far by heart. Um, four 60s would be 240. Four fours would be 16, so 256. Four um, 200s would be 800. Four 50s would be 200, so we're at 1,000, so 1,024. Gosh, that's a large number, and now it probably won't fit. 1,024. And there you have it. Let's look at the next one. We have power of a power here, and then we'll multiply the W to the negative 2. So let's do that first. So W to the negative 2 times W to the 21. So power of a power, multiply your exponents. Now we're going to add them. So W to the negative 2 plus 21, which comes out to be 19. W to the 19. Okay, and I, um, I actually, I'm not even sure what I was going to say there. So just pretend I didn't start a sentence. Okay, 3n to the fifth, the quantity to the fourth power. And then we have n squared, the quantity to the third power. So 3 to the fourth power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, or 81. And then n, multiply your exponents to the 20th. So that's the first part. Then the second part is n to the second power raised to the third. So that's n to the sixth. And this finishes out really easily. Now I can do 81 times n to the 20th, 20 plus 6 to get my exponent on the, the product. 81 n to the 26th power. Perfect timing because the song, song is almost over. And that concludes our video for tonight. See you guys in class.